Good morning to the Honorable Prime Minister, First Ministers, and all the delegates here today. To begin with, I'd like to recognize the nations of Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and all neutral people on whose traditional territory we use for this conference today. The Assembly of First Nations is honored that we are included in the conversations that will take place during the conference. Despite this, we find our efforts continuously ignored and we are left vulnerable, excluded, and underfunded. The federal government continues to treat us as though we are, to some extent, subhuman. Left to suffer with devastating diseases, poverty, and a multitude of drug epidemics. Take the opioid crisis, for example, which mainly affects Caucasian communities and is heavily represented in the media. But our rampant alcoholism and drug addictions, which devastates our young people, is rarely mentioned. Our country, determined to be known as a mosaic of, of diversity, continues to ignore the very people that gave light to our country. There is no diversity, there is no respect, and there is no unity when our communities are ignored and left to fend for ourselves. Canada claims to be accepting of cultures, yet we cannot seem to accept our original culture. We demand that the federal government takes a stand and helps us build a new Canada, a Canada built on respect, recognition, and reconciliation. We are here to destroy the Canadian stereotype that Indigenous problems are caused by Indigenous people, when it's evident our problems are caused by decades of oppression and by outdated and racist laws and policies. We all know too well how residential schools, the Indian Act, and other decisions by federal and provincial governments were used as a deliberate tool to eliminate Indigenous languages and cultures. A cultural genocide, if you will. If we are tr to truly advance reconciliation, we must undo the lasting damage that resulted. Whether this means updating or demolishing the Indian Act, action must be taken. We hope our bold determination and spirit will fuel a debate where we can discuss pressing topics, develop framework, and come to numerous resolutions. The common theme in our demands should clearly display the segregation our people have faced. We ask to be involved in NAFTA negotiations, to have control over pipelines on our treaty land, <laughs> to receive adequate funding across various sectors, to implement more progressive laws and policies, to receive assistance in our ongoing pandemics. We also make our undying support clear for the 94 calls to action outlined in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. We work hard to close the persistent gaps that exist between us and all non-Indigenous peoples when it comes to employment, opportunities, income, and housing, but we can't do this alone. We have no choice but to rely on the federal and provincial governments to do what is best for us. This means doing more to address the unique needs of Indigenous peoples. We hope this conference will introduce a new chapter in our existence, a chapter in which our voice, long silence, will be heard. Our calls for help, which we can only hope, 